Rocco Anthony Mediate, the American professional golfer who's won six times on the PGA Tour and three times on the PGA Tour Champions, has a lot to say to live golfers. The 59-year-old launched into a stinging criticism of some live golf stars for their lack of gratitude and anger towards the PGA Tour. Stay tuned while we tell you all about the drama between live golf and the PGA that's been happening in the world of golf. First things first, what was exactly that got Rocco so riled up? The 59-year-old joined Garrett Johnson, an American entrepreneur and award-winning shot putter, on his Beyond the Clubhouse podcast and had no problem voicing his frustrations at the attitude of some players who have joined Live Golf. When talking about ungrateful players, that included the man behind the Saudi-backed venture, Greg Norman, who recently said his new stars felt liberated by leaving the PGA Tour. Off the very entity that gave you life. <laughs> Understand? The PGA right, right. Tour gave everybody that's playing on that tour life. Mediate says the Aussie pro golfer owes everything to the PGA Tour, just the same as all his other live golf stars, and the attitude they've shown towards the tour has riled up the veteran. Moving on, here's what Rocco had to say to live golfers. Mediate said that the things going on kind of pisses him off the way the former PGA players talk about the organization, even though it's given them everything that they have right now. Oh, it's kind of It kind of pisses you off on the way guys have talked about what gave them everything that they have. The American pro golfer added that everything Greg Norman has is because he played on the PGA Tour, and apparently that wasn't good enough for the Aussie. Rocco asked where Norman would be without the PGA. Think about Greg Norman. Think about it. Yeah. Everything he has came because he played on, on the, the PGA, PGA Tour. Tour. But that wasn't good enough. Mediate doesn't blame anyone for cashing in and joining Liv, but he's admit that if he joined, he'd show some respect towards the PGA Tour. The 59-year-old pro golfer admitted that it'd be great to make money, and he doesn't blame them at all, adding that golfers had been going to Saudi Arabia for a million years for appearance money, but was irked about how ungrateful these players were. Rocco also said that the people at Liv Golf called him and said they wanted an old guy on the Liv Tour. He'd be on board with it, but the important part was that he'd want to thank the PGA Tour for giving him everything that he has. If they called me and said, hey, we want an old guy on the PGA Tour, on the Live Tour, I would say, yeah, that'd be cool. I want to thank the PGA Tour for giving me everything that I have. The six-time PGA Tour winner feels very strongly about doing things the right way, which is that players earn what they have. Nothing's handed to them. Now let's talk about what's going on between Live Golf and the PGA Tour. Norman founded the Live Golf League as a competitor to the PGA Tour, and it's funded by Saudi Arabia's public investment fund. Live has already snatched PGA Tour stars like Phil Mickelson, and Norman himself is a former tour player. In turn, the PGA Tour has prohibited Live-affiliated players from participating in its events. Live Golf, along with a few of its players, filed a federal antitrust lawsuit against the PGA Tour last month. The plaintiffs claimed that the PGA Tour improperly suspended golfers for competing in live golf events and illegally used its monopoly power to suppress competition. All Norman had to say about that was, change is good. He thinks the evolution and innovation of the professional golf product has been needed for decades. The Live Golf CEO visited Capitol Hill to meet with members of Congress as the Saudi-backed league got into a tangle with the PGA Tour. Up next, apparently the PGA is out to get Live Golf. You could call it a mixture of jealousy and fear. The PGA is aware of the risk of a takeover and loss of their longtime power as Live Golf deepens its bottomless pit for money making. Some of the Live Golf events were overlapping with the other tours, and this ended up raising questions about whether the existing tours would struggle to attract players when they're up against Live Golf's 54 hole, no cut tournaments with purses typically around $25 million. In August, Moynihan confirmed Live players would remain banned from the PGA Tour, explaining that every player has a choice, which he respects, but they've made their decisions. He went on to say that they're going to continue to focus on the things that they control and get stronger and stronger. Moynihan's comments came in coordination with a tour announcing enhancements, including a commitment from top golfers to play more tournaments, larger purses, and a guaranteed salary for full-time players. Lastly, Norman seems to be targeting some big names for the 2023 Live Golf League. Since the conclusion of the inaugural Live Golf season with the team championship at the Trump National Doral in Florida, there have been rumors about which players the organization will target for the following season. While he didn't name them, CEO Greg Norman told the press about his plans for 2023, and stated that he'd like seven of them to be of a high caliber. Earlier this week, it was reported that Patrick Cantley and Xander Shoffley were two of the four players being linked with Live Golf, and at world numbers four and six, respectively, they would certainly fit Norman's criteria as the organization looks to add the likes of Cameron Smith and Brooks Kepka, who joined in the inaugural season. In addition to player recruitment, Live Golf has other big goals in the works as it prepares for its second season. Prize money will be increased to $405 million over the course of a 14-tournament league, and each 
each team will have an established captain who can build their team franchise. Not only that, but Live Golf is currently negotiating a TV deal after its coverage in 2022 was limited to YouTube and its official website. While the identities of the potential new signings remain unknown, it appears certain that regardless of who is next to join Live Golf, the offseason will be anything but quiet. Moving on, let's talk about some of the Live golfers who've managed to earn a fortune. In total, Liv has managed to boost the earnings of their highest paid golfers by an estimated $370 million since May, which brings their combined haul to a record $650 million. The American golfing legend Bryson DeChambeau won eight times on the PGA Tour, including one major championship, the 2020 US Open, 27 years old. But apparently that still wasn't enough. He joined Liv in June, saying he wanted to be a part of something from the ground up. We don't have an exact figure, but DeChambeau was paid a little more than $125 million to join the Live Golf Series through the 2026 season. Next, how does the Live Golf Tournament work, and up to how much can players win? The name Live refers to the total number of holes to be played in each event, 54, in Roman numerals, corresponding to three rounds of 18 holes, as opposed to the usual 72 holes in other tours, which is four rounds of 18 holes. Alternatively, 54 is the score obtained by making a birdie on each hole of the course with a par of 72.1. Greg Norman, former professional golfer and former world number one, announced the schedule for the first season of the Live Golf Invitational Series in March of 2022. This consists of eight tournaments spread across 54 holes without a court. Each tournament will feature 48 players divided into 12 teams of four players, with simultaneous starts. The total prize money to be distributed is $255 million. Lastly, here are some more Live players that have earned the most. Dustin Johnson won the first season of Live Golf, which consisted of eight tournaments, the last of which was the team final. The American has earned more than any other golfer on any tour in a single season. The victory capped a monster total for him. If you include his $18 million for winning the season-long individual title, Johnson finished with $35,637,767 in earnings. Up next, the Spaniard Eugenio Lopez Chacara, who achieved victory in the Bangkok event, made himself a whopping $6,932,000 over seven tournaments and is in the top 10 of earnings. There's also Cameron Smith, who won Live Golf Chicago, which was the fifth tournament of the new Saudi circuit and took home a million-dollar prize. Moving on, it looks like Pat Perez doubled his earnings with his jump to Live. Even for a player accustomed to raising eyebrows, Pat Perez's remarks sounded extreme. Sure, Perez's first three Live events were probably profitable, but doubling his tour earnings? A closer look at the numbers revealed that the four-time PGA Tour winner was not only speaking earnestly about these numbers, but he was actually underselling it. Just winning the Live's team championship alone pushed Perez's season earnings above $8 million. Finally, there's Charles Schwartzel. The first Live champion made more money in three days than any year on the PGA Tour. He won the inaugural Live Golf Series event in London and pocketed checks worth $4.75 million. $4 million for the individual title and $750,000 for being part of the winning team. That was way more than he'd made in any one year out of the two decades he spent in the PGA Tour, including 2011 when he won the Masters. That's a wrap for this video. Do you think we're ever going to make it past this Live vs. PGA drama and finally go back to just enjoying the sport? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!